Hey, Chloe, did you hear what happened with No Man's Sky? Yeah I heard all about it. That game was supposed to be the holy grail, the space exploration game of our dreams. I can't believe how much of a disappointment it was. I actually think it's a good game. Yes, there are missing features, and the UI needs some work, but it's not a bad game. How can you say that after we were lied to? I think there's more to it than that. Looking back. I've noticed something that might shed some light on what really happened. Oh, like what? Here's the bus, let's finish this when we get to the university. So, what did you mean, what did you notice? Well, after the game was first announced at those game awards, there was a lot of interest. But, I noticed the hype drain didn't really start rolling until after the game was announced for the PlayStation 4. So, do you suspect this was also Nii's fault? Not completely, but they were a part of what went wrong. So, what did go wrong? Several things, it wasn't just one. First, the lack of transparency surrounding the development of No Man's Sky greatly contributed to a culture of overhype from both the gaming media, and gamers. Second, Sean Murray suffered from acute Peter Molly New Syndrome. What's Peter Molly New Syndrome? He promised more features than Hello Games could realistically deliver before launch. So, you're saying that he did lie to us? Not intentionally, I don't believe his intentions were malicious. He overestimated what his development team could realistically accomplish in the time they had left before launch. Too many gamers are taking this whole thing too personally. They want to believe they were fooled into buying No Man's Sky with lies. They want to believe that Sean Murray was out to deliberately deceive them. The truth is there was no deliberate intention to lie. Now, this does not let Sean Murray off the hook for promising what Hello Games couldn't deliver. He had an opportunity to temper the growing landslide of hype by being more transparent about the game's development. That would have lessened the impact, and would have prevented the overblown hate for Sean Murray and Hello Games you see on sites like Reddit. However, there is a side to this most people are overlooking. So, what side would it be? The role that Sony very likely played in this whole mess. Hype for the game had already started growing after the reveal at the VGX Awards, but it wasn't until No Man's Sky was announced for the PlayStation 4 that the gaming media hype exploded. Most of the expectations gamers had for No Man's Sky were fueled by the gaming media. They were irresponsibly throwing out all kinds of possible things that could be in the game and gamers latched onto these as if they actually were going to be real features. The gaming media often didn't make it clear that these was all just speculation, and honestly gamers should have known better. But, Sean Murray could have stopped it by just telling the truth. Yes, he could have. But, he likely wasn't allowed to. Hello Games got in bed with Sony, a move that was likely prompted by a need for funding. Sony has a history of not being very transparent, and Hello Games was likely placed under certain contractual agreements in exchange for funding which prevented Sean Murray from coming forward with the truth. Yeah, that's true. The whole thing with the Order 1866 kind of comes to mind. Similar thing. To be honest, Hello Games would have been better served going to Kickstarter for funding rather than getting into bed with a big, impersonal corporation like Sony. I'm not saying that No Man's Sky being on a console was a bad idea. But I think it would have better served Hello Games and the gaming community had the game released on PC first then was ported to the PlayStation 4 afterwards. It is my belief that Sony pushed for an earlier release to take advantage of the overblown hype. No Man's Sky, to be honest, 
needed at least two more years of incubation before it was ready to launch. You actually believe Sony was responsible for the game launching when it did? Yes, Sony very likely wanted a return on their investment, and as the hype around No Man's Sky grew to a fever pitch they saw an opportunity to cash in and put pressure on Hello Games to release early. So, let's run it down. You had overblown hype from the gaming media. You had hype from the gaming community and speculation on their part that was often being taken as truth. There was a lack of transparency on the part of the developers. And, you had Sony's role in this whole mess. It was a perfect storm of media and fan hype combined with a lack of information. That is what happened with No Man's Sky. But, why did it all happen like that? To be honest, the gaming community was ready for a game like what No Man's Sky was going to be. The energy that No Man's Sky represents is quickly sweeping through the gaming community, and our society as a whole. The energy represented by the military shooter is no longer appealing. Those types of games are on their way out, and games like No Man's Sky with its more positively oriented slant is on its way in. Games where combat and killing aren't the focus, those are the games which are now getting the most attention. The era of games that glorify war are pretty much at an end. It isn't that they will go away, but they won't be as popular as they once were. No Man's Sky is just the beginning. The same way Doom popularized the first-person shooter, No Man's Sky is ushering in the new kind of game. It is paving the way for games like Doom Universe, Astroneer, and Planet Nomads, Games that make their focus exploration and survival rather than shooting everything that moves. Also, if you've noticed, No Man's Sky doesn't represent aliens as the enemy. The game encourages you to befriend them, and they are also represented more positively too. Yeah, I've noticed, aliens in the game are treated more like they are in Star Trek. Exactly. So, getting back on topic, what can we learn from No Man's Sky? A few things actually. First, don't be so quick to jump onto a hype train. Second, ask questions, and if you don't get any answers then push for transparency. Third, don't let yourself get caught up in the cult of personality. Like Peter Molly knew, Sean Murray made a lot of mistakes. Finally, if a game doesn't meet your expectations don't take it as if it were a personal attack. That's the problem with the people on Reddit, they see this as a personal attack. When in truth it's a combination of corporate greed, media responsibility, a lack of transparency on the part of the developers, and a lack of common sense on the part of the gaming community. Wow, I never really looked at it in the exact way. No Man's Sky isn't a terrible game, it has flaws, but it also has potential. Updates and improvements are in the works, most will be free, and some will be paid DLC. We will get the game we were promised, and likely more given time. But, how is this different from Electronic Arts selling an incomplete game so they can sell DLC? They did that intentionally, not out of malicious intent, but because it makes the money and they don't take responsibility for the consequences that result. Hello Games and Sean Murray need to take responsibility for their part in this mess with No Man's Sky, and in some small part they already are. They're working seriously on the game's issues and are already talking about adding new features and content. Now the media and the gaming community need to take responsibility for their role and what happened. Don't be like the people on Reddit who would rather point fingers than take responsibility for contributing to the hype train. Finally, they're Sony in their role, but good luck in getting them to take responsibility for the things they've done. We were all a part of what went wrong with No Man's Sky, so we all need to take responsibility for the things we've done. You really gave me a lot to think about, Chloe. I'm glad I could help. I'm really looking forward to what kind of game No Man's Sky will become a year from now. It's more than the new features in DLC, but also the mods too. Yes, the haters don't get just how hard No Man's Sky was to make. The kind of math the game relies on is incredibly complex. Procedural generation is actually a very old technology in gaming. But Hello Games took it to a whole new level and it's amazing that Small Studio was able to pull off something so monumental. Despite the problems, Hello Games and Sean Murray deserve our praise for what they were able to accomplish. Like you I can't wait to see what the game will be like a year from now.
You know, I think I'll give the game another try, and stick with it to see what happens. Good. Maybe if they do add multiplayer we might be able to finally meet up and game. That would be cool. So, this is where it happened. Yes, this is the place. What can you tell me about the people who gave you this technology? I never met them in person, we spoke only via emails and text messages. The texts always came from burner phones, and they used a new number every few days. The emails also came from different addresses, whoever they are they went to Great Banes to cover their tracks. Tracking them down isn't going to be easy then. No it isn't, but it isn't impossible. True, we will find them. We'll find them together.